What's going on ladies and gentlemen? For today's review we're going to be revisiting one of my favourite directors of all time with David Cronenberg's The Brood. So of course the film's written and directed by David Cronenberg. It stars Oliver Reed, Samantha Regga and Art Hindle. And the plot essentially concerns Frank who is trapped in a custody battle with his ex-wife over their daughter Cindy. Frank's wife is part of a very unorthodox psychotherapy cult. It's led by a psychotherapist called Hal Raglan who practices a theory called psychoplasmics. It's all very odd and um, a little bit pseudo-scientific and kind of um, just quite weird, Frank agrees. As Frank's ex-wife Nola deals with her problems, um, her abusive childhood, a string of murders take place in which people such as her mother and father are killed by um, small deformed children or the brood. Frank is of course embroiled in all of this and has to try and figure out exactly what's going on. It turns out that psychoplasmics changes more than just the way you think. So I mean this movie deals with some very familiar Cronenbergian concepts if you will. One of the things that Cronenberg has always weaved into his movies is the idea that ultimately the mind is part of the body too. You know Cronenberg has a great understanding of the fact that the brain is an organ and ultimately can fall victim to disease in the same way as any other part of the body. It also continues along with the recurring theme through Cronenberg's work of the idea of losing control of one's body. In this case with Nola kind of creating children of her rage if it were that kind of feed off of a psychological link with her and sort of do her kind of unconscious bidding if if you will and much like most other Cronenberg movies this movie doesn't hold your hand it doesn't say okay here's the plot here are the main characters here's this here's that it just says hey this is happening get with it or get lost, you know? And I can understand why that would be potentially off-putting for someone who's not a Cronenberg fan. Granted, I am, so I can totally get on board with that because I know that the payoff is big with Cronenberg. When it reaches the grand finale, it is as disturbing and kind of awe-inspiring as anything Cronenberg ever did. This film, I mean, on a visual level, it's... Perhaps not one of Cronenberg's best. I mean, he would he would kind of become an incredible visual filmmaker in the 80s with movies like Scanners, Videodrome, The Fly, those types of movies. In the 70s, he was still working with very small budgets and kind of was, was often relying a lot, especially with movies like Shivers, um, and to a slightly lesser extent stuff like Rabid and the Brood was sort of relying on concepts over flash if you, if you will. That said I mean from a visual perspective it does have kind of a interesting thing going on in terms of its special effects and, and so forth. I mean the special effects aren't aside from the big kind of signature effects of the movie it's all very sort of simplistic stuff. And then you've got obviously the kind of the brood who are, you know, it's a very basic but very effective kind of makeup job that is done on these kind of, you know, the, the brood characters. Again, this this movie, like, like I say, it deals with the usual kind of Cronenbergian concepts. But this movie kind of moves on a little bit from stuff like Shivers or Rabid away from kind of... A sexual element and more to elements of kind of parenthood um, are what be what are being explored here which is something that he would explore again in scanners but I mean and, and I know that it's kind of a cop-out but if you're a Cronenberg fan you'll enjoy this movie if you're not you probably won't I guess what I'm saying is that this isn't the best gateway to Cronenberg I don't think I think that if you want to kind of make an introduction to Cronenberg I'd suggest starting with something like the fly or maybe a history of violence or something like that over this. I've got to say, The Brood deals with kind of very typical Cronenberg concepts in a very Cronenbergian way, um, a very cryptic kind of style of storytelling. And ultimately, it remains entertaining from beginning to end. It's very nicely paced. All of the effects are perfectly passable the the last the, the big kind of finale effect is superb and on the whole the characters 
uh, are all kind of people who you want to get on the side of, pretty much. A lot of people who you think are, are good turn out to be bad, bad turn out to be good. It's, it's, all, it's all a very interested and layered movie in that regard. I mean, without a doubt for me, Cronenberg was on an upward trajectory here in his career. Obviously, with works like um, Shivers and Rabid, he was providing a great basis for what his career would become, to perhaps even a greater extent with The Brood. Um, but it would be, for me personally, with the likes of Scanners and Videodrome, that he would reach his kind of peak of his career. Obviously, he would peak commercially, I would say, with The Fly, but artistically, yeah, I think Scanners and Videodrome are probably my two favourite Cronenberg movies. Videodrome definitely is my favourite, but Scanners, I'd probably say, was second. Overall, like I say, The Brood's a a great movie. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. But then I would suggest taking that with a bit of a grain of salt because I am a, a big Cronenberg fan. I think that he's a great filmmaker who made some multiple horror classics and The Brood is most certainly one of them for me. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next time. My podcast is linked in the description. I'd really appreciate if you'd go and check that out. Thank you very much.